Okay, so it's been a few days since I've worked on this um, because I'm a very important man and I've had numerous social obligations that could not be uh, put aside. Um, however, I have a rare free moment uh, today and I'm uh, gonna be taking apart this rudder, or excuse me, the vertical stabilizer, which I put together because I thought it would be cool. And now I look at it and I wonder, why did I do that? Because now I have to take it apart. Uh, so I'm gonna take this sucker apart. I am going to prepare it for primer. And if I have time, uh, I'm going to actually prime today. Uh, I think I have time. So that's what I'm doing. One thing I discovered when I was uh, putting this thing together is that all the holes, they're matched drill, but they're also supposed to be final sized. Um, I, by the way, there's a difference I discovered looking at the forms between match drilling and final size. Match drilling means you have two holes that are roughly lined up, final drilling or final size. Uh, when you do the final drill, you kind of make sure that they're the right size. Um, so these should all be final sized, all the parts that I have. Uh, but I was noticing that rivets wouldn't go in there. I, I took some rivets and was trying to fit them in and the holes are slightly misaligned in many cases. And so in the instructions, it does say final uh, size drill, but each of the individual holes are large enough and I didn't want to uh, uh, do any kind of final drilling that would make it easy to put the rivets in um, because I think it would lead to some of the holes being uh, oval shaped, at least the one holes uh, beneath the surface, uh, the surface, whatever. Um, so one thing that I found is that if you get like a size 30 drill bit or 40, um, depending on what the size of the hole you're putting in, if you can kind of wiggle it in uh, and uh, push it in the hole and then kind of move it, it'll kind of realign everything. And I think that'll be useful for later. Um, anyway, just a little tip. I think I might have solved what could have been a potential problem for later. So anyway, I'm gonna take the sucker apart and get everything ready for priming. I was gonna start prepping the parts for primer and then priming right now, um, but I've got a kid that you can maybe see in the background. He doesn't know he's being filmed, but I know he's being filmed. Uh, he's decided that he needs to work out right now in my garage. And I can't spray any primer while he's in it because uh, this primer itself is actually pretty toxic and can kill you within 15 to 30 seconds of exposure unless you're wearing a full hazmat suit, um, which he doesn't have. So, uh, I'm gonna do some parts on the rudder. Um, maybe you can prime everything together, the rudder and vertical stabilizer. Um, that actually might save me some time. So I'm gonna do some parts on the rudder. I do need to do some machine countersinking and uh, some match drilling there. Not a lot, but a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. And hopefully by then, this guy will be out of my garage and I can actually do what I wanna do. Never have kids. <laughs> I finished doing some of the stuff on the rudder that I wanted to. Um, there is a few points in the plans that are a little bit ambiguous. For example, on the rudder horn, it wants me to countersink a certain side that I'm not sure why it was supposed to be countersunk. I did it, um, but I'm not sure that I was supposed to. So uh, I want to kind of keep on going with this because it's a problem that's bugging me, but my son just finished using the garage for working out. And so I've got about an hour to a daylight left, probably two hours. And I think I'm going to just switch back to the uh, uh, 
vertical stabilizer and try to prime that thing up. Um, I kind of wanted to do both the rudder as well as the vertical, st vertical stabilizer parts, uh, prime them all together. Um, but I'm still kind of trying to figure out a couple things. So I think I'm going to prime them separately and uh, uh, that'll slow things down a little bit maybe, but what can you do? So I'm going to start uh, prepping the parts for priming. Okay. So for this next step, I have this stuff called pre-coat that I basically am going to spray in all these parts. You're supposed to uh, kind of spray it on. It's uh, non-toxic, so it's not too bad to work with. Then you get a maroon scratch bite pad and, pad and scuff up the material. What this is supposed to do is kind of abrade the material so the primer adheres to it a little bit better. And the pre-coat um, does a little bit of degreasing, but it also helps promote adhesion, you know, magically. Uh, I don't want to show all of this because this is really, really boring. I'm not even going to do a time lapse because trying to record outside is kind of a pain in the butt. So basically, after I do all this, I got to spray it all off, let it dry, uh, and then apply the primer. Um, a lot of people online say that the pre-coat step is not necessary. Uh, on the other hand, this stuff is really expensive, so I'm going to put pre-coat on. Anyway, I'm going to do this to all the parts on the vertical stabilizer and then prime. Okay, it's been about two weeks since I've last actually filmed anything. Um, I think last video I took, I was priming some of the parts to the uh, uh, vertical stabilizer. And so that's all done now. Um, got everything painted in by this AXO, I think it's AXO Nobel uh, green. Um, kind of this nasty primer. I usually use a full suit and a filter mask outside to spray this stuff off. But so far I like the results. I've done some scratch tests on these things and the, the uh, primer seems to adhere to the aluminum really, really well. Um, I did have the camera set up for me painting and forgot to turn it on as I commenced painting. So you're not going to get any footage of that this time. Um, and I know you're probably really um, sad about that, but you know, life will go on. I promise you. Um, in any case, uh, I was going to start riveting. I have all the parts painted that I need to for the vertical stabilizer, but I did do some practice projects first. Uh, uh, these things right here, and um, they were kind of, it was a little bit of a disaster. So I decided to spend a lot of time uh, creating, uh, getting sheet metal, putting a whole bunch of holes in it, like this thing right here, and uh, practicing riveting. So I practiced riveting, doing uh, back riveting techniques, riveting with a bucking bar, riveting with a back rivet bucking bar, um, using a pneumatic squeezer, things like that. I have a, a squeezer that I'm going to use to do most of the rivets. In any event, I think I'm ready to roll the dice with my riveting skills and I'm ready to start riveting the rear, uh, excuse me, the vertical stabilizer. So uh, tonight, probably what I'm going to do is uh, rivet the uh, rear spar first, uh, the rear spar assembly. And uh, I think actually this won't go too bad because I can use the squeezer and it's easy to get consistent results with that. Um, and then I need to dimple all the parts and then uh, put it together by putting on the uh, the skin on the on the substructure. Um, so maybe I'll be able to do all that tonight. I don't know. I can say this though, that prepping all these parts and getting everything ready uh, takes a lot of time, more time than I anticipated. And I anticipated it would take a lot of time. Although I think I'm gonna get faster at it. It's interesting. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos on making planes in preparation for my own build here. And uh, you know, I've often wondered, you know, how do they do this? How, you kind of figure things out. Um, uh, even though it takes a lot of time, I can see that I'm already getting a little bit better at uh, doing a lot of this stuff and can do things faster, higher quality. So hopefully by the end of this entire project, assuming I actually finish it, uh, I'll be able to do things really, really quickly. Um, in any event, what I'm going to do now is tape off some of the holes that I don't want to rivet and I'm going to rivet the rear spar assembly. Hopefully that goes well. Um, if I have more time tonight, then I'm going to try to rivet the whole thing together. My wife is a nurse. She works the night shift right now and I think it would be cool if she could come home and uh, see a vertical stabilizer all riveted together. She won't think it's cool. She finds this whole project annoying actually, but I think it'll be cool. So we'll see if I can get to that. In any case, I'm going to start uh, taping off this rear spar assembly and riveting it together. <laughs>
And there you go, my first rivet. Somewhat anticlimactic in a way, but that's satisfying. Now I just gotta rivet the rest of this piece on. Well, and there you have it, my first airplane part. Uh, again, putting this together at this point, somewhat anticlimactic. That kind of went easier than I thought. Um, I'm practically done with the plane. In any event, I guess I should probably get to uh, squeezing and pounding some more rivets and finish off this vertical, sta vertical stabilizer. So, I guess I'll get to that. So I'm finished for the night. Um, so, so far in this project, I've been able to deburr a bunch of parts for the vertical stabilizer and the rudder, as well as prime it and put together a few things. First off, I put together uh, this thing, whatever it's called, who knows. Then I put together this thing. Um, got it all rooted together, everything checks out, and overall it went, wasn't too bad. Uh, now that I am about 32 hours into this project, it probably went a lot faster for anyone who's watching this video, but this stuff takes a lot more time than I anticipated. Um, it's kind of fun, but it takes time. Uh, and now that I'm an experienced builder, I'm ready to dispense wisdom, what I've learned from this process for any of you who might be trying this. Uh, in no particular order, first, I really like uh, the Axo Nobel, I think that's how you pronounce it, primer. Um, I've been banging around these parts like a crazy person. Um, watching other people's videos, I thought I would just be able to, you know, dance around these parts like a ballerina, but everything's awkward sometimes, or a lot of things are when you're manipulating these things and working on them. And 
the primer just isn't chipping. It's bulletproof. It's pretty good primer, which is kind of what everyone said on Vans Air Force and other forms. So first off, I really like the primer. Um, there is some cases where in spraying it, um, overall I've been happy with, it seems to be pretty easy to spray. I've never sprayed anything before. This is my first time uh, doing anything like that. Um, however, there is some parts that are really rough, almost sandpaper-like, um, especially on the front of the vertical stabilizer inside the skin where I was kind of far away. And it turns out that if you're far away like that, it causes that. So I've had to buff that out or sand it out on some of the, the surfaces. And that's real pain in the butt. Um, but anyway, really like the primer. Um, I also bought a little tool that measures how thick the paint is on. So I think the Axo Nobel is supposed to go on uh, at about 1, 1 1.3 mils, something like that. And I've been spraying on a little thick, uh, about 2 mils, sometimes even 2.5. Sometimes it's a little closer to what it's supposed to be, but... Regardless, I'm putting it on a little thick. That little tool kind of helped me realize that. So next time I do a bunch of parts, uh, I'm gonna know to spray a little closer and a little bit faster, uh, not do a second pass, things like that. And I should be good to go there. Um, another thing is I found out that, I mentioned earlier that this sort of was anticlimactic when I put this together, it went together easy. And it did, it went together pretty easily. However, after I put it together and looked at it, I noticed that this plate wasn't fully flush with this part right here. And I could actually, if I angled it right, I could see light coming through it. Uh, and so I ended up drilling out all 10 rivets and redoing it. Um, I didn't countersink this plate deeply enough and so it just wasn't sitting, the whole plate wasn't sitting flush. Uh, now, when I've, I've practiced uh, removing rivets a lot and it's never really worked out for me. So when I first, my plan was kind of like, well, if I can't drill out rivets, how about I just never make a mistake? Um, and that was my original plan. It didn't really work out that way. So I drilled out all these 10 rivets and in drilling them out, I drilled each one out perfectly. Like measuring the inner diameter of the uh, rivet holes after I drilled out the rivets were well within spec, almost not changed at all. Um, so that was nice. In any case, um, uh, some other thoughts in no particular order. I'm using a hydro-pneumatic squeezer. Uh, it's pneumatics is what it's called. Uh, I think they have some uh, pneumatic squeezers that are a bit bigger. Um, this thing is really finicky. It, it took me a long time to figure out how to uh, get it to work right. Um, you have to bleed all the uh, air out of these lines. If there's any air in there, it's just not gonna work at all. Um, I had to do that several different times. Uh, sometimes overnight I'd hang it up really high and I'd have this like massager, you can get it to shake it um, to kind of get the air up. Uh, in any case, it seems to be working really well now. Um, I really, really like it. Uh, I've looked at videos of people using the other pneumatic squeezers, never used one myself, but they're pretty dang big. This thing, it's really light, really easy, nice to maneuver. I do have only one complaint about it and that is this. There's a screw right here in the bottom that if you don't put a ton of Teflon tape on it, it'll start to come loose and unscrew as you go. In fact, if you look at some of the video, I have a video of it, and I'm not sure if I, I'll put it in, but it starts to unscrew and leak. And uh, I've noticed that before and talked to them and they said, put more Teflon tape on. So I did, at least I thought I did, but it was coming loose and I'm glad I noticed it when the, uh, some of the fluid was leaking um, before it blew off in my face. Uh, so really not happy about that particular thing, but now that I've put a ton of Teflon tape on it, some of the thicker types of tef Teflon tape, it seems to be in there, not moving, and really like this thing. Um, another couple tools that I've decided I really like is first off, deburring. I like this DeWalt uh, electronic screwdriver. Um, it's gyroscopic, so when you push the button, it doesn't actually move necessarily. You have to kind of physically turn it, and it'll go. And it's really nice to kind of put it in the deburring hole. You kind of push the button down and turn it slightly, and it works really nice. Uh, it's a lot easier than using that hand tool, and I think you can get more consistent results with it. Also, surprisingly, I almost didn't buy this, but when you're sitting around waiting for your airplane parts to come, and all you do is look at the internet, um, you end up buying a lot of tools that you kind of think, maybe I didn't need that. But I really like this uh, Air Clico tool, um, remover, putter in, or whatever it's called. Uh, when you're doing a lot of Clicos, it's really nice. Um, didn't know if I'd like it that much, but I do. I like it a lot. And I really haven't gotten to the outside part of the airplane, airplane where I'm guessing you do a lot of, use a lot of Clicos. So I like that sucker too. Um, okay, 
another thing is I've discovered that it's really, my wife likes to say stuff like I have a problem listening or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But apparently I also have a problem reading instructions because I kind of bounced around the instructions um, and, you know, priming the parts. I actually ended up priming and missed some instructions to countersink a few holes. Um, there's a couple other mistakes I've made or things that made my life harder because I was trying to do things out of sequence. Um, I try to be meticulous actually on this project and not following the instructions, just going straight through it has been, uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to keep doing that. So another tip, pro tip from a guy who has 32 hours of building experience, uh, read the instructions, just follow them through line by line. Um, at least for me, I missed a lot of stuff. Um, Another mistake I made is uh, I actually put an extra hole in the rudder skin or vertical stabilizer skin when I was using the pneumatic squeezer to uh, dimple. Um, it's really close to where the dimple hole was supposed to be. Um, and so that kind of caused a slight panic. I almost decided to just call it quits and go watch old episodes of The Office or something like that. But fortunately, I stuck it out, got online, and found that that's a, at least the way I screwed up. I can kind of fix it um, by doing two holes around the hole that's kind of screwed up. Um, and anyway, that's about it. So after 32 hours of work, <laughs> I've got these two parts right here. So I used to think I could finish this airplane in about three or four months, but it turns out it might take more like five or six. I don't know. Um, anyway, tomorrow or next time I start working, I'm gonna have to uh, put together the skeleton and put the uh, skin, the vertical stabilizer. Um, that is actually going to involve bucking rivets with a rivet gun and a bucking bar, which I didn't have to do on here. The pneumatic squeezer is nice once it's dialed in. You, it's almost impossible to screw things up. Um, it just uh, gives very, very consistent results. The other nice thing about it is, especially on this sucker right here, you have different length rivets. But for the 1 8 rivets, I set it to 85 PSI on my uh, regulator that I have the pneumatic squeezer plugged into and it does it perfectly. For the three 32nd rivets, I put it to 55 PSI perfectly. I don't have to adjust for the length of the rivet or anything like that. All I do is set the PSI level or set the uh, pressure regulator to that. Um, anyway, that's about it. Um, so I think I'm gonna end this particular video here and uh, next video I'll be putting that the skeleton um, and putting the skin on top of it. And then I'll have a control surface. Um, or vertical stabilizer anyway. I don't know if that's a control surface. Is control surface the rudder? I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's basically, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of 90s country and I decided I really like 90s country. In fact, if you don't like 90s country, you have no soul. Um, maybe I'll get sick of it next week, but for now, I like it. Anyway, that's it.